Are you ready for tonight? Yes. Yeah, okay, good, good. Okay, I felt like I was preaching at 8 a.m. Sunday. Who comes at 8 a.m.? Thank you. I knew you. I knew you knew me because it was only a few people like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to read that quote. If you want to win every time, then don't get into the ring. Yes, and I'm not talking about a ring. I'm talking a boxing ring. I'm not talking about the ring of the bride. I'm talking the ring, the punches that come in life. And so when you're ready to go, because time is of the essence, and we are going to enjoy tonight. I believe that God wants to bless you, challenge you, and remind you who you are and who he is. So 1 Corinthians 9, verse 25 to 27. Before we read it, are you there yet? Just keep your finger there. Oh, mark it with the cry. But I believe that, you know, we've been preaching on repositioning, right? We position ourselves, repositioning as a church. And I think I think it's not a coincidence that the series that we choose to preach, I believe it's the timing of God. And I am praying and I'm believing that as a body of Christ, all of us, that we rise to the occasion. That we encounter the real God and to know that no matter where we are in life today I want to tell you that the year is not finished the year is not finished your life is not finished if you're breathing go like this exhale we still have hope we still have hope no matter where you're in life and if you're doing great in life I applaud you and I ask you to continue to press forward and get a hold to what God has for our lives. But I believe that we're coming in times that we need to, we need to choose. It's, it's a choice. We need to choose. And I feel that we are, you know, should I say, you guys are Wednesday night, right? So you, you know me, right? Who comes every Wednesday night? Okay. Then, wow. So a lot of new people. Thank you for coming. Thank you. <laughs> I thought it would be like half of the room. It's like, wow, guys, wow. Thank you for coming. Because <laughs> Wednesdays are kind of different because I'm different. And so if you're used to Sundays, I, yeah, I, for years I wanted to be a Sunday kind of preacher. And the more I tried, the more I got lost. So I embraced who I am, but I believe that you're going to be blessed. So just follow me, stay close, and we get there, right? Um, but, uh I have heard uh, the people say, you know, why do you guys preach almost like the same things, you know, like as a church? Why do we preach about staying in faith? We're just preaching the Gospels. We're preaching faith. We're preaching love. We're preaching hope. And what happens is we have to be creative in how we're going to deliver. Because it's good to get messages that are very inspirational. And I'm all about inspirational. Hey, inspire me. I want to be inspired. But a lot of times, I feel that inspiration is not going to get me there. Inspiration is not going to sustain me until I choose to transform my life, until I choose to face the things that are coming my way, and until I choose to walk the word of God. It's not going to bring any change into our lives. So you might hear something that is repeated, but I believe it's because the word is alive and you should be getting something every time you hear the messages. So my prayer that to, is that today you will hear something that would challenge you and catapult you to where you need to be in this last three months for 2020. Let's not wait until 2020 comes. You, the moment is now. No one is promised tomorrow, but the moment is now. Today we can get right with God. Today. And he receives us as we are. He loves, he loves broken people. He loves all kinds of people. So are we there yet? First Corinthians. It says, everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. I want to compete in a game. You know, I always wanted to do like a 5K running marathon. But I don't want to be training, to be honest with you. <laughs> like it looks good. I like the gear. You know, I, I like the idea of, of participating, right? But I just want to do a few prayers, pray that God's strengthening my calves, my legs, right? Hydrating my body, but then I don't want to drink and uh, water. I don't want to hydrate, right? So many times we see life like that. We want to be overcomers, want to conquer all things that come our way, but we refuse to live this kind of life. So it says they do all, they do, they do it to get a crown that will not last. 
And here, I think it's the Apostle Paul, he's talking to the Corinthians church. And you know at that time what they got? They didn't even get a, a golden medal. They were leaves. Do you understand? I'm not going to run in like for what? For leaves? I can make my own wreath. It was a wreath that they got. That was the prize. And if you go back to the, the tournaments in those times, they were legit. Right now we have all like all techniques, all these supplements, all of this. In those times they didn't have it. So we read it, it's like, oh, okay, you know, because we think about our workout, right? You're like, I have a good regimen. I'm like, we're talking beyond regimen. We bought, we're talking about that. They lived out their calling because they believed that they were athletes, and this is who I am, and I'm going to win. And did, it did it, they didn't sign up just to participate. And I think many times we just sign up for life just to participate in life. God doesn't want you just participating. He wants you winning. And it doesn't mean that we win every time, but our life, we're, we, according to Jesus, that's our position. We're fighting from victory. It doesn't feel like it, right? But we, they, there has to be a time when we know it, that when you're losing your mind, when you don't have enough finances to pay your bills, when you're in, sick in bed, when you are depressed, or when you, whatever, whatever problem you get to experience, that's when you need to know. You need to know that you're fighting on the bed from a, from a perspective of God that you are victorious. And it's so just easily said than done, right? Because we get tired, we get exhausted. And I tell you why we get exhausted. I believe it's because we refuse to train. Training is daily. Amen? What verse am I on? I know where I am. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave. Have you made your flesh your slave? Who has made their flesh your slave? Wow, some people are like, boy, like, I oh, am. Yeah. <laughs> you better be winning every battle, right? But he says, no, I strike a blow to my body and I make it my slave so that after I have preached to others. Do you know, Because just because you don't have the platform of a preacher, you are a child of God. And everything that comes out of your mouth, you are living, you are, you are, the, you are the ambassador of Jesus Christ. So people are always reading you. And sometimes we're so preoccupied and so, so invested in making sure that other people are running and they're, they're being disciplined in their lives and they're doing what they need to do. And I'm talking spiritually, but you, yourself, let yourself go. And I don't want to preach, so yeah, I want to preach to make an impact on people's life. But if I really want to make a, an impact in the world, I need to impact my own life. I need to make myself, the flesh, and my own desires slave to me. It's called self-leadership. If we want to talk in those terms, right? Self-leadership. How are you leading your life? You know, we think that our... Our Christianity is just coming to church, serving, and those are things that they should. It's part of it. It's part of the equation. But the equation that it's going to give you that result is when you in, you put yourself in it and you say, you know what, I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. Let me tell you, let me help you today with something. You cannot win against that which you refuse to see and confront. I believe that's why we're losing so many, so many fights. You know, I grew up um, uh, in a beautiful, exotic country. <laughs> you like Hawaii? No. It's a tiny country, El Salvador. And when I grew up, there was a, there was a civil war, right? So, you know, you grew up in that atmosphere, and then so you learn not to see, not to hear, not to speak, because if you do it, then you die, right? And so they kind of train you, like, you know, in those times, like, Salvadorians, to this way, to this day, they're, they're known to be crazy. Who has a crazy in themselves? Who's a bit of a Salvadorian? That's not true, you know that? 
But I'll take it. Hey, I'll take it. If you think I can overcome anything, I'll take it. Because they think that I can eat everything just because I'm Salvadorian. That I, like, they're like, do you eat this? I'm like, no. Somebody asked me, do you eat roaches? <laughs> what makes you think I eat roaches? I was poor, but I wasn't crazy, you know? But, but I, I, I learned, so you're conditioned many times in your life, you know, and then you have your, your, your family that you, they're, you know, you're taking care of you or not taking care of you. Um, depends how blessed you are, right? But the good part is that God always redeems you, whether you had a good childhood or not. It is in our, our beauty that we have in God is that we can always start new, and he always has a, a, a future for us, right? But then I grew up with that, like, you know, like, I don't want to see, like, it's in front of you, so you, you don't want to see, like, I refuse to see many things in my life, and I, I didn't even know that I was refusing, so I live life without not wanting to confront things, and it's, it becomes very comfortable, and then when I became a Christian, I, I was almost like the f- perfect atmosphere, because this, there's this philosophy in many, in many, in many uh, Christians' arenas and churches that if you're living in faith, then it's okay, because faith, is, faith doesn't see what it is. And so it kind of helped me like, oh, okay, this is the perfect ground for me to continue to not confront because then you have to say, you know, no, like you're sick. I would say, no, I'm not sick. I'm dying, but I would be not, no, no. You know, like, and, and if you were here Sunday, you know, if you didn't hear the message, you should go hear it. But, but I had to overcome a lot. And I think that many times uh, we refuse to, and as a church, I think we refuse to, to confront we refuse to see that which we need to overcome. And then we are, we are losing battles. It's not because God doesn't want us to lose battles. It's because you refuse to open your eyes and see. And Paul says that he said that he didn't punch. He didn't do his punches just to like, you know, like bit in the air. No, it's like, and I think that's how we fight if we don't, if we refuse to open our eyes and confront what's going on in your marriage and confront what's going on in your finances and confront what's going on with your family, with your children, with your career, with the insecurities, with the doubt, with the unforgiveness. You need to confront it and you need to open your eyes. Can I get my gloves? I actually have gloves, my own gloves, but these are not mine. I couldn't find them. So mine are pink, I've been told. Is this that one? Yeah, see but I can do something with this, I think. Be careful, because I punch really good. I've been told. I decided to wear my shoes, my workout shoes tonight. (laughs) I'm like, I'm not going to be wearing, like, you know, tennis shoes. There's no way. Because with this one, I get wrong, you see? So... So lately, let me tell you about me. Uh, I've been taking some classes. Actually, the uh, Lily, you know Lily from church. So she's been, she's been. I've been working now at least twice a week, and um, and it's good, right, to release. And so she said, you know, Virginia, we're going to, we're going to box. And I was like, oh no. And I didn't want to go on the ring. It's not even a ring, right? It's just her, like. But I'm going to tell you why we're, losing, why we're losing our battles, because I never realized how exhausting it is to box. She has this um, app that is, uh, I don't know the name, it's Tabitha, I think it's called. And it's only like 30 seconds boxing. And so I was like, 30 seconds? I'm like, Psh, you're talking to me. You know, I can do it. And, it, I'm just, and then she just puts her arms and and so... I even forget the stand, but there's this stand, right? Look at me. I mean, 12 and 12, like somebody who boxes, tell me. And so you go like, psh, 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 right? And so, and then she, but she wants you to hit, like, because right now I won't get tired, because look at, I'm doing it with style, right? <laughs> I'm tired. I'm already getting tired, but I'm not hitting anyone. 
And then, so I said, no, okay, then you need to teach me. And so she was in front of me and said, she said, hit it hard, right? But when you miss, because you're investing, the, there is such a force. You're, you're releasing all this energy, right? So I'm breathing the way I need to breathe, right? But every time I miss the punch, I was more exhausted. When you miss it, it's even like, you have to even like, stand even more firmly because you're missing the blows and after like and and after an hour an hour a minute and 30 I was exhausted (laughs) exhausted because you know what I wasn't hitting to hit I was just like okay then let me see if I can hit it and once I got it I got it but I'm like oh my gosh even when she tells me what every week she's like we're gonna do boxing I want to puke I want to puke, and then it, this is what I thought. Okay, let me see this. This is the way, wait, wait, before that. I think we were fighting the battles. My husband couldn't be here because he says, I'm going to laugh too much at you. And so <laughs> he did, he did. I said, you have the day off. So, so he says, I can see you because, you know, like sometimes we, f- we feel like we're boxing. We're like, you're like, okay, come here. You come. Because he's strong. So if I punch him, it's okay, right? You'll be okay, right? He's an MMA fighter, so anyways. So if I hit you, you just stop me. But I'm going to close my eyes, so it's like breaking a piñata, right? Are you ready? Okay, I trust you. No, just stop me. Let's see if I can do it with... No, 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 no. Wait a minute. I'm going to close my eyes. So let's see if I can hit him. Okay, so I'm just going to... Okay, here. Here, okay, I'm going to... This is me, right? But I'm closing my eyes because I refuse to. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Am I getting it? Tell me where to go. Forward, forward. To the left. I don't know. I don't know. Whew, I'm exhausted. Yeah. But what did I do? I know I can do it because I'm silly, so who cares, right? Oh my God, I'm exhausted. Water? Gosh, you're such a good fighter. Do you know the devil is super happy? Do you know our enemy is super happy? He's like, yeah, they're going to get up and they're going to do their boxing. Yeah. And because we refuse to, yeah, yeah, you're like, Father, I, I'm praying for my family, but you don't want to talk about what's going on with your family. not do you know that those are empty punches because you want God to fix it all so you refuse to open your eyes you don't want to see the you don't want to see that the reality it's not the truth but it's the reality of your life you refuse to see where is your marriage father I just thank you that you will bless him and open his eyes or her eyes. No, you open your eyes. I'm so exhausted. (laughs) It's the shoes, probably. (laughs) So we fight and we refuse to, to confront life. You probably are fighting for your finances, but you are not even, you don't even have it all together. You refuse to live on a budget. You know, maybe you're sick in body and and physical and the doctor told you to adjust your diet, but you refuse to do that because you're fighting like that. You don't want to know it's God who's going to do it. It's God who's going to do it. No, those are empty blows. I don't want to live fighting my entire life with empty blows because life is going to hit you. And there is an enemy, and he's very strategic. I mean, I think he wakes up, and I used to say, oh, you know, there's the saying, oh, crap, you know, so-and-so woke up, like, right? And the, and the devil is afraid, and I was like, joy when we get up. He's like, let's see how they're going to be fighting, fighting an empty ring, fighting the wrong fights that we were never called to fight. So... I believe that the Apostle Paul is giving us an insight when we read this. And I would make it funny because I want to punch you. But in the right place so you wake up. 
we need to wake up as a church, but I believe that Paul is giving us an insight in how to reposition ourselves in the victory that is was intended for us. Do you know that this victory is intended for you and me? You tell me right now, do an examination, just tell me how many fights have you won this year? Like you know, it doesn't mean that the fight went away, it's that you know that you know that you know what, I'm winning this one. But that's a, a mindset. If it was up to me, I wouldn't be preaching today. Can I be honest with you? I wouldn't. But then I decided, you know what, what is it that God has given me? I am, I am tired that the enemy has to tell me who am I, how do I feel, what happened to me. No, you know what, if God has given if I really believe who God is, Virginia, you get up and you aim. And you aim to win. And you, and you, and you are, you need to make a choice to be able to pray out, pray, pray your victory. Yeah, we win in victories. Maybe it doesn't change overnight, but you are changing. But there is no change unless, unless you want to open your eyes. Unless you want to confront your issues. There is no way that we're going to be transformed. If not, we're just playing the church. And I don't want to play church. Do you want to play church? And sometimes we say, no, I'm not playing church, but you are the church. And at some point, we need to address if we're kidding ourselves. I say, you might be swinging punches and getting exhausted because, as you see, I was very exhausted. Because even if you are not effective in the fight, you're always releasing things. Are you effective in your battles? Are we being effective? Or are we just quoting things? And believe me, I, I okay, I'm going to say, somebody said, like, why come you say that you, we, um, you know, you always said that sometimes we quote the scripture, that, but that's what we need to do. I'm not saying don't quote the scripture. You, the scripture should be your foundation. The word of God should be your foundation. The Holy Spirit that he will help us. He's our helper, but he only is going to tell you what he hears from the Father. He's only going to repeat the word of God. But how are you going to know the word of God? How are you going to know if the Holy Spirit is speaking if you don't know the word of God? So I'm not saying get rid of the word of God. I'm saying live the word of God. Live it then. I have to tell myself, Virginia, either, either I'm a believer or I'm an unbeliever, non-believer. Either I'm going to believe that God is for me, and if God is for me, then you get up, you show up, and you get ready to knock the devil down. You know, and God wouldn't ask us to do something, as I always said, if we didn't have it in us, but there is, we don't want discipline, we don't want nothing, we just want, I don't know what is it that we're looking for. And while we're so busy trying to, to God to show up in the ring, and he wants you in the ring. It's the ring of life. We're, we're going to forever be, this life is just because we're Christians, we're not exempted from any trouble and any tribulation. And I think at some point we need to, we need to know it. And this is how you know if you're still in the fight and if your fight is effective. Is there any change in your life? Are you seeing change in your life? Maybe not around your atmosphere, maybe for the, even for the people that you're praying, but are you seeing change in your personal life? If you're seeing change and you can see, you know what? I am overcoming some stuff. I am addressing my own self. I am addressing my children. I'm addressing all those things. Not the way that you used to address things. Like I love what Pastor Felicia said. If you've been doing things the same time, the same thing, and the same thing, and the same method, and it's not working, it's kind of telling you, okay, that's getting old. There's something that you must do. I think it's time for you to open your eyes and for me to open my eyes and to confront those things that are making you inefficient. What is it that's keeping you? Hmm. Let's go to 2 Timothy 6.12. It says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life, to which you were also called 
and have confessed a good confession in the presence of many witnesses. It says, get a hold of eternal salvation. You know, why does it say to get a hold of eternal salvation? And we're like, I know it's, it's, good, it's good to know the idea that one day we're going to arrive in heaven, right? Like, you know, sometimes we look forward to those days. And God wants you to look forward. God wants you to know. And he wants you to have an, an eternity mind. Not because it's, some people have an eternal mind, an eternity mind. But they're like, what would be a nice word to say? <clears throat> but they're ineffective while they live here on earth. Because being, being uh, heavenly minded, that doesn't mean you're absent on this earth. That doesn't mean you deny everything that goes around you. Like we think like, no, because I'm so heavenly minded. One day when I arrive in heaven, but what are you doing here while you're on earth? Are you the most miserable Christian that exists? Are you the most offended person that exists? Are you the most divided person that exists? When I get to heaven, I'm going to love my brothers and sisters. No, no, you need to do it now. It's now loving our brothers and sisters. It's now walking in forgiveness. And walking in forgiveness is a process. You know, walking in forgiveness is just for you, not for the other person. So I think we confuse it. And sometimes we say, you know, I forgive a person, but then you see them and you want to choke them. <laughs> Those are just feelings. But then you have to remind yourself, you know, I did release that person. And until my emotions one day are going to align with what I'm confessing. Because I confess that I'm going to lay hold of eternal life. Why does it say to let hold of eternal life that means that we can grasp it you and i can grasp it if we can just grasp that that idea that that word and if we ask god to make it real to us to give us the insight the revelation lord what does it mean to grasp it, eternal life what does it mean to get a hold of it you know why because life on this earth is just by a vapor right it's a mist. You see it, but you can't hold of it. You can't grab a hold of it, right? Isaac took all this mist, the little thing mist at home, so it's in my kitchen. Because I cooked, guys, last week. Yeah. It was like a new me. Yeah. But there was no pressure. I said, just let me cook, and it smelled really bad. So I'm like, see, this is why I don't cook, like, if, it, if it's, I'm on a dirty in my kitchen, I don't want to cook, you know. I'd rather have it clean and somebody deliver food. That's how I like it. So anyways, I was cooking. I was like, ah, oh, it smells like fish because it was fish. And I'm like, why did I, you know. Well, actually, I helped my husband cook. Okay, that's the truth. <laughs> yeah. But that's cooking, like, involved. Like, I prepare the fish and everything and grab every. That's cooking for me, so. Because I usually don't even do that. I just sit there and he serves and I clean. That's her agreement, though. But I, I was cooking and then I told Isaac, grab, grab me something because I cannot stand the smell. I want to eat, but I don't want to smell it. Right? So I can see the mist. And I was like, I was mesmerized by this little thing that he has. And all of a sudden, the light goes on and you can see the mist, right? And I was like, Psh, trying to grab it, trying to grasp it. You see, that's life. You, you, you can't get a hold of it. But he says, if you just get a hold of eternity, your life on this earth is going to work out. Because he says that we can grab a hold of eternity. I mean, it hasn't even happened. It's in my future. How is, it, how is it that I can't get a hold of eternity, but I cannot get a hold of this life, this little dash that God has given us? And I'm like, I was praying to the Lord. I was like, I want to get a hold of eternity because if I live for eternity, I'm going to be very effective on this earth. Because I'm gonna sit, I want to see everything. This is temporary, Virginia. This is just temporary. But you, you, you've been equipped. You've been equipped. But just because we have the gear, that doesn't mean that we know how to use it. Right? Like I have my boxing gloves. You should see all the things that I have for working now. It's still sitting in my garage. <laughs> I have the gear. I have everything. But if, my, if, if the coach wouldn't come to my house, they would still be sitting there. But, so who's your coach? Who's, who's your coach? 
you need coaches in your life. And that doesn't mean like you go pay for a mentor. There's so many people that mentor me. I don't know them, but I know them. I watch them on TV. You know, I see they're doing something. There's a lot of mentors here that you don't even know you, you're mentoring me. You know, and sometimes people think that my, the only time I can have a mentor is if I sit with them, if they give me time. Like, you know what, I'm a, I'm a, C, I, I'm, I'm a server. Like, I love how they live. I love the real. What are they doing? Question them. Put them in a corner. What are you doing? I want what you have. <laughs> so if I ever put you in a chokehold, just tell me. But that's, I, I love, there's people that I love to watch, and I, I feel like, wow, we can learn from these people. I don't have to learn by experience, you know that? We only learn by experience because we refuse to obey God. And even then, he lets us, right? Okay, you wanted, to, I'm telling you not to jump on the paddle, but you got on the paddle, got on the boat, and you went, and he didn't tell you to go, and, and you know, like, so many times we just do things because we feel that that's God speaking to us. And I believe like I, you know, when Isaac was little, he always said, I want you to talk to me like I'm a grown up. He was like five. I said, so you want to be a grown up, right? He's like, yes, I want you to talk to me. So I would talk to him. And then I would say, well, a grown up, a grown up would listen. And I would take him to the Bible, you know. That's when I was like, I'll take him to the Bible. Let's memorize this Bible. We're going to live it at home. It's just only the foolish learn by, by a stick, right? It means you have to, you have to crack him one. <laughs> and he got it. He's like, so I said, yeah, because this is for grown-ups. And I said, so if you want to live like that, like, yeah, I can do that for you. I can crack you one here and there. And it's so easy to teach it to our kids, but we don't listen to God. You know, but we, our kids, are like, you better listen to God. This is So we negotiated a lot with Isaac, and to this day, he negotiates with me. That's what I created, a negotiator. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. No matter how full of faith you are, how well you keep your finances, you maybe be that best person because don't don't think that only storms comes to those people that take care of their finances don't take care of their health and no it's 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 god is not a um a respecter of person in blessing you and whatever it's up to you you can have it all together you be, be careful even the way you speak but one thing is for sure that you will have storms in your life, whether you are good or not good, whether you're doing this or not. It comes with it. And I think we need to just, like, get a hold of that. Like, on this earth, yes, but this, this earth is just a little, a little bit of a gap, a little bit of a dash. But on this earth, I'm going to see the victory of God. On this earth, I can overcome. On this earth, I can do this. Can you imagine we, we grasp? the word of God and we believe who we are and we believe who he is. Can you imagine what we can do as a body of Christ? Can you imagine the lives that will be transformed because of you? Nowadays, that's what I'm doing. I'm imagining that I'm already walking in my wholeness. I'm already walking in my healing. I'm already walking in the things that God has given me. If I'm good at putting all these things in my head and worrying so much, why wouldn't I? You know, I'm going to invest in thinking the best. And that's really hard. When you're worrying, close your eyes and try to picture the opposite. And you tell me how it feels. But it's doable. It's doable. And one of the things that I want to encourage you to do is this year before the year's over, confront those issues that I've been talking about. But you need to know that God is going to be with you. You're not doing it alone. You might feel alone, but that's just a feeling. It's not your truth. We have to separate the truth from reality because that reality is that we're not going to negate the facts. The fact maybe right now is that your marriage is falling apart. Maybe the fact is that your career is not moving forward. The fact is that you thought that you'd be further today in life. The fact is that your family is broken or the fact is that whatever finance is not, whatever, you name it, what, there's facts. But if you want to win, confront those facts. 
fight them and be smart how you fight. And that means you do things. You're going to do the opposite. You're going to do, you're going to apply and experience change. It's time for us to allow God to transform our lives. I want to be transformed. More than ever, I'm like, I want to be transformed. I want to be whole. I want to be healed. I don't want to think like, sometimes we're thinking like, boy, I'm already older, so what? It's never too late to start. Maybe I'm too young, but God wants to use you now in your youth. There is no excuse for God or with God. If you are a teenager, get a hold of the eternal life now. Are you getting something? You know, faith, it actually, faith is not denying the facts. Faith actually positions us to win. That's faith. That's faith. I think we have confused the good news. We talk about the good news of God, right? And the good news of God, uh, the confusion is that if we have the good news of Jesus Christ, then, you know, I'm always going to be joyful 24-7. You think that, you know, you're never going to um, be offended. You think that, um, you know, you're never going to have conflict. You're never going to experience uh, financial difficulties. You're never going to experience disappointment, loss. You name it. We think that we, we don't. That we're not going to do that because, you know what, I'm a woman of faith and I have the word. No, actually the good news is that no matter what you encounter, you can overcome it. You can conquer them. And that's the truth of God. That's the good news. That's the good news. It's not I'm exempted, but I am able. Say, that's good news. What's your good news? That you can overcome. It's okay to speak. You have to say it. You have to start confessing. You know, we're good at confessing our feelings, right? I love it. There's a song about confessing our feelings. I don't know it, but there is a song. I won't even intend, I tend to like to sing it. But there is a song, Confessing a Feeling, and it feels so good because when you're confessing a feeling, it's like, whether it's good or bad, it's like, oh, so awesome. You're releasing all your like, Ugh. those are punches. But then who are you punching? Sometimes I think we are fighting and it's that the enemy even already like it's out of the ring. Like he's like, you know what? Let, let that person just like, you're punching your own self. Like, because you're, refuse to close your eyes you're you're actually hitting the the people that you love the most because you refuse to open your eyes so the devil was like let me just step away from the ring he's outside let me just see this people think that they're in faith and because we refuse to open our eyes you're hitting your spouse you're hitting your children you're hitting your finances you're hitting your hope your dreams your vision and then you're figured out why you're exhausting and you can't believe anymore it's because you have done that you've been doing it alone I believe that the failures and mistakes of the past because we all have failed right if you're here say that you know thank God I have never failed you just failed today because you failed to to see that reality you know you we all fail all we need any Jesus. We have all failed in relationships, in parenting, and being spouses, in our finances, and you name it, we have all failed. But that doesn't define us. But it's so easy to allow that to define us. So I believe that you have to embrace them and let the become the battle scars. Let let them become the, your strength. You know, instead of letting it become your, your unforgiveness, letting it become bitterness, you let them strengthen your muscles of faith. I think it will make us more resilient. And I think it will teach us how to be resourceful, very resourceful as we move forward. There's so many resources that God has given us. Not only an inheritance, but he has given us creativity. He has given us, we are able to be strategic in how we stand and how we fight. I think it's time to open your wounds to God. 
How many times have you really opened your wounds or still you going very religiously to God and presenting your case, but you won't talk about you? We just want to talk about, you know how we always say we talk about the problem because sometimes we think that you're not the problem. You think that everyone else is the problem. Oh, how about you come and you said, you know, Lord, I am here. I, I don't know how I got here. And I, I'm going to tell you that he's going to show you how you got there. He's going to tell you, no. He's going to tr make you tr trace back your steps. He's going to tell you, you know what? You, you stopped believing me here. You decided to go your own way here. And the beauty is that he points it out, but he doesn't bring you condemnation. He actually just allows you to see so you can come back to him, so he can put you straight with him. Because we are made righteous, right? Through Jesus Christ. I think we need to win the battle of the mind. You know, I, I don't know how many of you here, but maybe you're super depressed. And you don't have to have depression to be depressed, you know. If you got the blues, then face your blues. No blues clues, but your blues. You know, face whatever it's going on in your life. Maybe you're very unhappy. Maybe on the outside you look so good. You, you look like you have it all together, but no one can get into you. No one can get through you and no one, you won't get through anyone. And I'm like, oh, I'm tired. I, I want us to arise and this is hard, but it's doable with Jesus. I'm believing for 2020. I believe in that God is just going to expand us in such a way. I'm believing for, for land. I'm believing for things. I'm believing that we're going to win this city. Like I am. But then if I'm not doing anything towards that goal, towards that vision that God has given me, I'm just, I'm just throwing blows in the air. So how am I going to prepare for the, for the massive amount of people that are going to come here? How am I preparing for that? How am I preparing my own heart, my own soul, my own mind? How am I doing that? You know, you want to have an amazing 2020 with your family. You want to see reconciliation because reconciliation is different than forgiveness. Reconciliation takes two people. Forgiveness it just takes you. And I, and I think that's why it's hard because many times we don't forgive people because they will never come to you. They will never admit that they did wrong. And that pisses you off, right? Am I the only one who feels like that? And then you could go into like, Lord, let me, let me take vengeance. Use me. I am your vessel. <laughs> I think we have misunderstood this last scripture when we think we are the vessel for that, like, Lord, you have me here. Use me. Let the wrath. <laughs> Second Corinthians 4, 6 says this to 11. It says, for God who said, let brilliant light shine out of darkness. Is, it, is, is the one who has cascaded his light into us. That sounds beautiful, huh? The brilliant dawning light of the glorious knowledge of God. As we gaze into the face of Jesus Christ, we are like common clay jars. You're just a clay. You're just a pot. A jar of clay. Not even crystal, clay. You know why? Because he can always reshape you again. Because if you break, you know what? All he do is pour his water, the water of the Holy Spirit, and he reshapes you anytime. So don't be afraid if you're broken today. Just, okay, Lord, let the Holy Spirit just wash me and make me new again. Reshape me. Whatever needs to be done, reshape me. We are like common clay, uh, clay jars that carry his glorious treasure within. Can you imagine? We, we are just, the God would choose to, for you and I to carry his glory. And you know who you are. And you know what you've done. And you know what you said. And you know what you've been thinking. And yet he chooses to put his glory in us. I mean, that's like, wow, Lord, you... You know every thought that I have. You know everything that has come out of my mouth. You know everything of me. And yet you have chosen to put your glory in me. I'm a carrier of his glory. 
though we experience um, oh, the glory of his glory, the power of extraordinary overflow power will be seen on God's, not ours. So we don't even take the glory when people say, I don't know how you do it. You know, it's God. It's God. I'm just a pot of clay. It's just deposit and I'm just you oozing his love, right? It's as though we experience a very kind of pressure. We experience every kind of pressure. Does it say some pressure? No, it says every kind of pressure, we are not crushed. At times, we don't know what to do, but quitting is not an option. Do you hear that? Quitting is not an option. You can think it, but just don't go for it. I've thought of quitting a thousand times, but I'm still here. Because quitting for me is not an option. We are persecuted by others, but God has not forsaken us. We may be knocked down, but not out. Maybe you're in a fight and you have been knocked down. Like, remember, it's 12 rounds, right? Oh, how many rounds? It's like, I don't know how many. How many? 12. You see, like, the 12 disciples, the 12 months. You've been knocked down every month. And yet, you know what? That's it. You were just out. It's not finished. Why do I always look at you like, I don't know, right? <laughs> We continually share in the death of Jesus in our own bodies so that the resurrection of Jesus will be revealed through our humanity. We consider living to mean that we are constantly being handed over to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of Jesus will be revealed through our humanity. What does that mean? It means that we love resurrection power, but we don't want to die to places that are painful. So he says, no, 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 that's available for you every day. And I pray that this message in some way has spoken into your life. That if it's one line that you grasp, but you get a hold of eternal life and that you choose to live your life on this earth, knowing get, if we get a hold of it, we can live this life and we can conquer. So I want you to bow your head and close your eyes.